Hello. Uh, last month was Garb August, uh, where uh, various people, led by the evil mastermind Criminali, uh, decided they were going to read garbage books in the month of August. And sort of a celebration, examination of what is garbage, what isn't garbage, uh, what's fun garbage, what's you know, just like, oh, that's garbage. I don't, I don't want to read this kind of garbage. And uh, for my contribution to that, or my, my, that inspired me because I have an author who I grew up with and that I've always, I, I, I've always held a little bit of like, kind of um, shame, nostalgic shame that I was so into him. And that is a Piers Anthony, a, uh, British-born, uh, but really American-raised and born, bred, uh, not born, but bred uh, American uh, science fiction and fantasy author who I think he he was he 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 was active like since like the fifties. Probably his career really kicked into it with the start of his Xanth series in nineteen seventy-seven. So that when I came along to him as a kind of twitchy, uh, pimply twelve-year-old. Uh, 12, 14 year old, somewhere, some, somewhere in there, uh, he was really in high gear, uh, pumping out lots of, uh, especially kind of fantasy books also, but also science fiction books. Um, and I decided I would go back and reread, uh, an actual, a little bit more of a contained series. I, I wasn't going to, the, the Xanth books are, I mean, I tapped out a long time ago, but I think the Xanth books are sort of like 43 books in the in the Xanth series. Piers Anthony is a commercial writer. He, he he was kicking out two to three books a year easily uh in his in his prime. Um so yeah, I decided I'd go to a little bit more of a contained series um of which um one of the reasons was is in the free library I found number 2 in the series, uh the B Blue Adept. But uh the the series is the Apprentice Adept series, which has at least at the start of it it has three books uh the split infinity 1980 blue adept 1981 and juxtaposition 1982 which all are focused on uh the character of style uh a uh, a very uh, a short uh kind of uh a surf who is basically an indentured slave on a science fiction planet a proton i figured i just I would just read that because uh, after that, um, probably after long after I after I had tapped out of uh, after I had tapped out of uh, Piers Anthony himself and moved on to other things, uh, he came up with yet another four books in the series five years later, uh, and those ones were following um, various children of the pairings that kind of fell out from the first three books so yeah yeah so yes split infinity uh blue adept and juxtaposition somewhere on the screen here that's what i am going to be uh i'm going to talk about today and uh you know the positives the negatives uh the in between uh, so you know what is the what is the story it is a literal science fiction fantasy uh hybrid the story starts off on the planet of science fiction planet of Proton, where uh, Style, who is a surf, and all surfs on the planet of Proton are naked. We're kind of getting into maybe the garbage August stuff. This a little bit of a harking back there to Edgar Rice Burroughs, who had a lot of naked people in his John Carter of Mars <laughs> series as well. They're just always naked. Um, he is a, he is indentured servant. Uh, this is a planet that is ruled by citizens who are the super super ultra rich who hold serfs as their indentured slaves, and you you are only allowed to be on the planet uh, for the term of your servitude. At which point you have to get off, or there's a tournament you can enter. Which if you win the tournament, you can actually gain citizenship that way. Though that is a extremely long and grueling thing with a with everyone competing and citizens themselves also enjoy competing into it because they are the idled super rich. So some of them also compete and some of them are former serfs who are obviously that good enough that they could have won the tournament once you've got to get, you've got to get through them. Um, style who is, yeah, he's a jockey. He, uh, as I said, he's short and he, he lets you know, especially in the first, in the first book that he is short and, uh, gets a lot of shit for it and has a lot of resentment for it and a lot of, uh, 
um, a lot of kind of the inferiority complex about about being short. Uh, oftentimes, anyone, any woman, any man he interacts with, that's always something that comes up. Um, he's assaulted during a horse race, uh, and uh, a beautiful robot woman, uh, also surf, so also completely naked, uh, is assigned to is assigned to him and she is programmed to protect him and also to love him. Uh, he discovers the magic world of phase where uh, he's, where it turns out because style, his parents were serfs and he was born on proton uh, because he was born on proton. There is a, uh, there is a, um, an, there is a counterpart an, an exact counterpart of him on phase. Uh, these two worlds seem to overlay each other and there's a shimmering curtain that you can will yourself through or spell yourself through as a sentient as a sentient person. Uh, Sheen, uh, the robot Sheen, which is uh, is is a Piers Anthony joke of machine. So she is Sheen. Um, so she he comes into this magic world of proton where yeah his counterpart has been uh has been murdered and it turns out his counterpart is sort of a, a wizard is one of the high ones of this of this world he is a surf on proton he is a high wizard an adept was what they were called and they're assigned by colors to be uh, adepts and he finds he gets to find out his magical powers uh which is very linked with uh music he has a he has a harmonica uh, and uh, rhyme, so that that is how he performs. He can perform his spells. So, throughout the throughout the series, you ping back and forth between the science fiction world of uh, Proton and the fantasy world of Phase. He tames a beautiful uh, unicorn woman, a Nasia, who the unicorn also can play music through their through the through their horn uh he competes uh, on proton he competes in that game tournament to try and earn uh citizen status because uh that's the only way he's going to be able to stay on stay on on uh, proton and it's also the only way he's going to maybe amass some power to be able to kind of fight back against uh the forces that seem to be arrayed against him on either side some malevolent force uh murdered his um his magical uh, counterpart in phase and tried to kill him and is still trying to kill him take take out take him out uh, on on proton um he meets the former wife of his uh counterpart and of course uh falls in love with her also she's of course also beautiful uh and and in the final book we really get into kind of like an ecological theme where the kind of the exploitation of nature comes into into uh, into into the fore. We've already had the thing of very um, the science fiction world of Proton has been so exploited, so depleted that everyone lives in domed cities and outside of the domes. The, there's hardly any air. There's not enough really air to survive on, and it's a bleak and barren thing. Versus Phase, where it is all lush and green and all nature and natural and stuff like that, and um, yeah, so, and what happens, of course, is that those in power on both sides of the thing are in denial about the uh, coming ecological disaster that is about is going to happen and also don't want to lose grip of their power. So they uh, so they're doing everything that they can to stop Style and his allies from trying to save uh, the 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 world, the both both of the worlds. So, yeah, I mean, you know the positives of this series I, you know, there's something about style being this short underestimated uh guy that i can see uh really kind of appealing to um you know to to youths to to kind of young young people especially maybe young guys of you know oh i'm looked down upon i'm i'm kind of persecuted because I'm not a full grown, I'm not a full, I'm not seen as a full grown man. I'm underestimated and stuff like that. Um, especially in the first, in, especially in the first book, I enjoyed the, the tournament, uh, tournaments uh, that they have all the games there's a certain kind of a grid system that the two combat two two competitors thing and they choose i think it's uh like you know uh you know physical or mental and you know all, this game grid and you kind of you you somewhat you it's randomized who gets to choose first and then you try and judge juggle it to your strengths and i mean you have stuff from football 
uh, to, you know, you could have horseback, you could have marathon, you could have playing ping pong. Actually, one of the most exciting, exciting games in, in the thing is a ping pong match, uh, in the, at least in the first, in the first book, it's like, it's a ping pong box. So there's a kind of a game element that, uh, Anthony does a good job of describing and, uh, is engaging that way. Um, you know, and yeah, I, I'm, you know, by the end, it's like, oh, there's kind of an ecological story here, which, you know, it's very straightforward, but it's like, you know, it's good, it's good themes about kind of the ecology and kind of the dan the dangers of, um, there's also just kind of an earnestness uh, to the book, which is kind of is kind of a, uh, is appealing. You know, Style refuses to lie, and he's an extremely honorable person, and he um, he always he could, there's there's circumstances where he could take the easy way out. He could he could cheat at certain points, but he says like, no, I'm not going to do that. That is not me, and so has to kind of he plays by the rules and plays by his honor in a way that um, makes for more challenges and also gives him rewards when other people see him. So that's, that's like, you know, not a, that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing to have. Um, you know, and, and some of the magic is, is fun. Um, yeah. When I was saying about style being combining mu music and uh, combining music and raw and rhyme for his his magic that he can perform in phase and that's that's like that is that is fun uh there's some extended poetry later which is like it, it's it's okay it turns out it's got some certain hidden easter eggs in it as well but uh yeah yeah uh so the negative and uh you know the first negative is not going to be a surprise to anyone who has heard of or has read Piers Anthony is that the women and the women creatures uh in this book are all you know sex objects that um through the plot through all the plot contrivances they all love love style and indeed indeed in the second book there is one woman who actually despises him who doesn't like him because she's a man-hating lesbian and it's because of that hatred that her her she is undone in the end just to kind of put a hammer home on you have to love you have to love this 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 hero here uh, and, you know, did I mention that everybody, uh, all the serfs are naked and that this very much, especially with uh, Sheen, the beautiful, voluptuous robot woman, uh, that 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 makes for plenty of uh, opportunities to note all the jiggling uh, and sexiness going on and like little kind of little remarks like that. There's also just like a ton of just like kind of the casual sexism of like, oh, uh, noting that like amongst the citizens, the female citizens of whom there are less, there's less female citizens, um, they are the ones who go in for the rejuvenation treatments uh, while, while the men don't, while the male citizens don't because, you know, they're vain. Uh, and, you know, women are, are pr prone to jealousy and irrational kind of, irrationally kind of changing their mind about stuff. Um, you know, and I know that there's the defenders who say, oh, but they're all smart, smart women, you know, smart, thoughtful women and stuff like that. Yeah, but they're smart, thoughtful women who all completely have the hots for style. And, you know, if they're if they're at odds with him, it's because they're being foolish, foolish females, which is probably, you know, and, you know, so he gets to have sex with lots of women now. There is definitely a thing of this is none of this is explicit sex. It's more, you know, and then they fell into each other's arms and then we skip to the next morning. This, at least this point in uh, uh, Piers Anthony's career, uh, it was very much kind of chased, chased sort of stuff. And yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's there's like it's a lot of a lot of wish fulfillment style is uh, a lot of time style or the plot rationalizes why he needs to kind of like he he gets to have sexy times with all the women. And, you know, I, I totally admit, especially I can see myself as 12, 14, horny, horny little dude is like, oh boy, this would have been a complete positive, um, at the, t at the time. And it's not, not so much, not so much nowadays. Um, the, and there's the thing of, again, when I was talking about rationalization, there's so much explaining in these books so much explaining it's like and that can be positive because like if this is kind of 
aimed at a younger younger readership there's sometimes where you're explaining stuff it's like oh i could see maybe a younger reader maybe wouldn't get that um but there are other times it's just like oh god i just felt like piers anthony was explaining stuff to me because he wanted to prove to the reader how much he had thought this out and how much it was you know right there um between the worlds this is probably a clunky one of the clunky things that i found about this books is that in proton they're speaking you know like they i am the I, me, you, them, but the, in uh, phase, it's the, thou, it's a whole ye old medieval-y thing. And there's a couple of times where people will use what sounds modern, but Piers Anthony will immediately come in and go, oh, but you'll notice that that actually follows the ye old medieval-y uh, rules for stuff like that. And it's like, you know, th th and that's just a minor occurrence. There's just so much so much explaining uh in in these books that it does it slows down what could be a little bit more uh brisk of a brisk of a plot um you know it is the, and you know ye old uh, language is not the only thing this is feels like a very kind of bare fantasy world it doesn't feel particularly fully realized with a history and stuff like that there is a little bit of a mention that way but it feels pretty bare proton i the science fiction world it's it's antiseptic but i kind of believe it's antiseptic because it's a denuded uh plan science fiction world where everything is kind of polished to a shine and you don't you wouldn't have that kind of ingrained history but yeah there's no history or, or feeling of that there there's magical animals there's supposedly other human beings other than adepts but eh, you don't really get it um there and when we get down to kind of the construction of these books uh structure wise um there's all the stuff with the tournament uh there's there's kind of a lot of fetch questing which gets tiring after a while you kind of like wish that this could have uh, started kind of speeding up because it gets like the, all the games start by the second book get repetitive um he's got to go there to get this thing uh, that also gets kind of you know he's got to gather together his allies for the final battle it's like this it's it's like it, it starts getting a bit tiresome and a part of that is also just the pacing where you know the, the in the last chapter it's interesting i think all the books are 12 chapter have have 12 chapters like a 12 chapter st structure in each oh of course it doesn't actually show the chapter things there but in the in the final book those chapters get longer and longer because there's a huge conspiracy and Piers anthony feels like he needs to explain every single detail of that conspiracy and how things are going to follow out and it really it just slows things down and what should be a light science fiction fantasy book it just kind of it slows down it gets a little it's so earnest it's so intent on you knowing that how smart it is that it's like oh, this it becomes becomes kind of boring so yeah um the in between uh this is the stuff like i don't know i don't know this could be a negative this could be a positive there's the exploit of nature of um citizens and serfs and i guess adepts and magic creatures in phase human beings do not they're they seem to be just terrified of the magic users and stay out of their way and it's the magical creatures that get exploited uh more by uh and by magic creature creatures there's unicorns werewolves uh dragons um elves um you know all all sort all manner of ye old fantasy creatures uh, kind of pretty generic in that sense but you know, it's it's like, yes, all the serfs are naked and they basically have to surrender their whole body, uh, including sexually to the to citizens. And there's a way there's in some ways where it's like how the citizens treat the serfs is quite well done in that they are very curt. They just like, I don't care. Like they'll they'll arrive for a brief second, say a question and then like be gone. And like like it's like we do not care. You are furniture to us. We have no cares about you at all. So there's in that way that it is well done, but it's also kind of creepy in you can it, it feels it feels like it's kind of glorying in it at the same time. It's it's that kind of uncomfortable balance, which I guess it's good it's uncomfortable. Uh it's just you know and to you know when when style is kind of going out for citizenship it's not depicted when when there's an outcome from that it's not depicted as like oh wow this is the best thing ever that this has happened or anything like that so yeah um no, the second thing is this question that kept on coming up which is what is a real woman because 
uh, this is a question that bothers style. Uh, he very pointedly says he cannot love Sheen because she is a robot woman. And uh, it's a less of a thing with Nasia, the uni unicorn woman who kind of fades into the background. Uh, who, and, and interestingly, why she fades into the background uh, is 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 another is another thing. Uh, he, he can't love a unicorn woman either. It's only when he finds a real woman that he can actually find love. And uh, there's a lot made of how this tortures Sheen, especially um, that she cannot she that he won't pair with her. Um, there's kind of like an, a certain obsession with breeding. Indeed, why Nacia kind of fades to the background is is breeding appropriate breeding is is going to happen with with nacia um and it's it's there's this kind of a strange like for all of his kind of uh kind of naughty tit titillation uh piers anthony is quite a conservative uh writer in that um yes there's sexy naughtiness but uh in the end uh sexiness should be leading to procreation and uh if there can't be any procreation he's not too sure whether he's not he he's, he's he's less less liable to reward that with uh a happy a happy outcome now a part of this might be style himself and his prejudices which i think the book nods towards but i really you really get the sense that uh piers anthony it's very much it's a kind of there's this kind of conservative impulse of we need to pair everybody off at the end properly, and that makes that makes a happy that makes a happy ending uh, to a book. Which, yeah, yeah, I, I I don't know. So yeah, that those are my thoughts on uh, the Apprentice Apprentice Adept series by uh, Piers Anthony, Split Infinity, Blue Adept, Juxtaposition. You know, I it's not it's like it's a, it is a nostalgia read for me. Um, and I have to put off the thing. If I, I have to put off, put out number one. If I wasn't reading, if I hadn't read this before in my youth and was kind of curious to see where, what, what I, I a fairly kind of a fairly solid example from Piers Anthony of what he did. Uh, I don't think I, 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 I doubt if I'd ever would have picked up, picked him up, or am, am probably going to pick him up again. Um, you know, uh, there's some people who stumbled into his uh, Bio of a Space Tyrant books, which are really uh, assault, assault, sexual assault heavy. Uh, there's He's had other things where we've had stuff with underage people uh, and sexuality in his stories, which Piers Anthony is one of these writers who is very much, I am going to talk about things logically in a way that just makes your skin crawl. <laughs> so I, I decided to go for the... The, probably what is the least squicky, most com, most com, most contained Piers Anthony um, work that I could get. Um, you know, I don't I don't hate the guy. The, the books are probably they're they're commercial they're 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 commercial entertainments uh, with some actual feeling behind them, which probably is what makes them uh, <laughs> feel slightly kind of uh, weird to me. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm always going to. It's I. I. It, Piers Anthony will always be a part of my reading history, and I'm probably always going to feel uh, fairly ambivalent about him uh, until you know, unless someone you know pulls up really atrocious quotes, and then I'll just be like, ah, <laughs> he's terrible. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Apprentice Adept series. Uh. I thank you for bearing with me. If you've actually listened this long to me going on and on about it, I should go to work now. All right. More videos later.